世の剣、主に受け売るか Greetings Neo2 fans, 
I'm Exsanguin. This time, I will be sharing with you my dual sword build that focuses on one of my all-time favorite skills in the Neo series. The sign of the cross. I call this build the double demon build. As you have seen in the earlier videos, this build focuses on damage and speed. I've tried various sets before ending up with this build and based on my tests, this combination produces the highest sign of the cross damage. For instance, compared to this Justice Ministry Golden Good build, the Double Demon build is simply the boss when it comes to Sign of the Cross. With that being said, this build is strictly for the Sign of the Cross skill. If you don't use Sign of the Cross that much, or you want to focus on other dual sword skills, or just melee damage in general, then there are other sets that can do better damage. But, if you love Sign of the Cross, and want to buff up another extra skill like Windstorm or Water Sword, then this build is for you. Now let's begin with the equipment. So the two weapons I'm equipped with are the Bamboo Cutter and Bone Feaster from the Master Swordsman set and the Wave Swimmer from the Warrior of the West set. Both are important in the build but it's not essential to max out both weapons. As you can see, I only maxed out my dual sword weapon. It has a level of 170 plus 10 with an attack bonus heart A+. You can either opt for this or select attack bonus skills A plus if you like, since both of these will be maxed in our core stats anyway. For extra damage, remodel your weapon to specialization 1 and specialization 3. To do this, press triangle on the specialization 1, then hit the confirm button on specialization 3. To access the remodel feature, you need to complete the roaming artisan submission first, and then use a metalworking chisel for each remodel task. You get one as a reward after completing the roaming artisan. Then it randomly drops from enemies, amritas, and treasure chests. You can also forge it at the blacksmith if you have the right materials. For the ranged weapons, only the warrior of the west bow is important. You can choose any ranged weapon as your second. Just make sure to roll for agility damage bonus and equipment lightness damage bonus for more melee damage. Now for the armors. You need 3 Master Swordsman armors and 2 Warrior of the West armors. We are taking advantage of the Master Swordsman's 15% sign of the cross damage bonus and plus 40 dual sword attack. And the Warrior of the West's 4% melee damage and its 15% melee damage versus electrified enemies. As for the armors special effects, you need to inherit attack plus 20 on all of your armors for more damage. This reaches a maximum of plus 36 on gloves, and plus 35 on other armors when familiarity is nearly full. Based on the results of my test, each attack inheritable contributes at least 500 plus damage, which totals to at least 2.5k to 2.6k damage overall. I also recommend rolling for unlimited on Mayo as you need some lightning magic to get the most out of this build. Temper for On My own Magic Power too, as it will help in the duration of your On My own Magic buffs and debuffs. As for skill inheritables, you don't really need one if you just want to focus on Sign of the Cross. However, if you want to boost up a secondary skill, you can choose any dual sword active skill you like. As you have seen in the earlier videos, I opted for Windstorm, which also did massive damage even if it was not backed up by a higher melee damage percentage like one from the Justice Ministry set. Regarding accessories, Yasukani Magatama is a must. Aside from that, you can choose any accessory you prefer. But I highly recommend rolling melee damage versus poisoned enemies on both accessories so that you can inflict more damage when you have the chance to use poison. For accumulation, I find it easier to inflict confusion when I roll accumulation for each element. For instance, burn accumulation on my weapon, saturation accumulation on my accessory 1, and shock accumulation on my accessory 2. Since this is not an on my build per se, I find it necessary to do these steps to increase my chances of inflicting confusion. Although this is not an on my build, inflicting confusion is a part of my playstyle, which helps me destroy most bosses with just a few sign of the crosses. I just love the extra damage that the confusion status gives, and I'm really enjoying connecting my favorite skills in that small window of opportunity. However, if you find confusion too tedious, then you can just inflict lightning, poison, and weakness and still do decent damage. You can also do some paralysis by swapping out your accessories with ones that are tempered for paralysis. I usually do this when I'm fighting human bosses and farming the winds of ruin submission. 
As for my guardian spirit, I went for Tengen Kujaku again because it is just the best guardian spirit at the moment for any build that centers around damage. The extra damage its high stance attack buff gives is simply unmatched. For the soul cause, I went for Skeleton Warrior as it has the highest attack in my roster that fits the attunement slot. Second, Yatsu no Kami for its melee damage against poisoned enemies. And third, Duki for its melee damage against saturated enemies. When I'm not using poison, I replace Yatsu no Kami with Magatsu Warrior for additional attack and the 2% active skill damage. For my on my Ojutsus, I use Shkigamis to inflict shock and saturation. When I'm fighting a boss that has saturation immunity, I simply swap out my water Shkigami with fire Shkigami. I also use Weakness Talisman since this time, I'm not using the Genmei set. I also use Carnage Talismans to buff my attack. Extraction Talismans to activate Tengen Kujaku's high stance attack buff. And a Protection Talisman to keep me from dying even when I'm in a critical state. For my ninjutsus, I only use a Tiger Running Scroll and Blister Beetle Powders for poison effect. When I'm using Paralysis, I swap out Blister Beetle with Paralytic Groundfire. Now let's move on to the dual sword skill points distribution. Obviously, I have Sign of the Cross 1 and 2. I also have Windstorm 1 and 2, but you can choose any skill you want to max out like Water Sword or Ragen. I also went for all Tai Chi arts for that 12% melee damage against unscathed enemies. Other skills are optional. I chose Cherry Blossom for minimal skill points consumption since I wanted to invest as many skill points as possible to melee mastery. As for my Mystic Arts, I chose Momentum not only for its key assistance, but also because it opens up the path to melee mastery. As for the Shifting skills, I use Raging Strike on a high stance sign of the cross for more damage, and Damage Boost Heart on Windstorm. I also put Damage Boost skill on low stance sign of the cross just in case I need to maneuver faster and immediately use the skill. For the other skills, anything goes. Just remember to use high stance often to keep Tengen Kujaku's attack buff active. If Raging Strike is too risky for you, you can also go for damage boost skill or heart at the expense of just at least a thousand damage. As you can see in these videos, the damage difference isn't that much. As for the clan, my choice is still Honda. You can't just go wrong with its plus 28% active skill damage. Finally, let's check the core stats. You need to max your heart and skill, as they both upscale with dual sword damage. You also need to set your courage to 9 for the Yasukani Magatama, and stamina to 22 to get agility B, since our armor sets are a bit heavy. I also set my magic to 55 to help in buff and debuff durations, and strength to 41 for additional attack. As a final note, this build is for Sign of the Cross fans. But to inflict the best damage, you need to meet all the buff and debuff requirements, which might need a bit of practice for perfect execution. But if you just want to go all out melee, just inflict poison and shock, and you're good to go. At first, I was kinda disappointed that Sign of the Cross is not inheritable to armors, as it is only limited to the Master Swordsman set. But think about it, it is almost twice as fast as a fully charged EI Quick Draw. You can easily chain two of these together, which I think is the reason why Team Ninja nerfed this skill. So that's about it. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you find this video interesting. Thanks for watching.